Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U online instruction. Welcome back from the break. Uh, now let's uh, continue with the discussion we had. Uh, we are having about uh, biosensors and the response time. And I told you uh, before the break, uh, we, we discussed that actually a very simple argument about uh, the geometry of diffusion of how molecules get captured by a planar sensor and by a nanoware sensor essentially can explain why the nanoware sensors are far more sensitive. And we used a very simple rule that we'll just use square root of dt uh, to see the number of molecules captured within a given time. And that led us to this remarkable results. But we want to do a little bit more uh, using this. Uh, for example, we want to explain that if going from the planar to the nanowares gave us this six orders of magnitude improvement, uh, should we just go ahead and make a nanosphere sensor? And if we did that, uh, will it make it make us give us another four or five orders of magnitude enhancement in sensitivity? So that is what we want to do. The simple approach we took uh, to calculate the response of a planar and uh, nanoware sensors require a little bit more generalization. Again, something very simple and elementally uh, elemental. You'll see uh, in a second how this is done. So the topic uh, uh, that approach I'm going to tell you about now is a slightly generalized approach based on diffusion of a triangle. Diffusion triangle is called diffusion capacitance limit. First, let me tell you, diffusion capacitance is not a capacitance. It is an analog of a capacitance, and I'll explain uh, how it works out. Now, remember, uh, maybe you may remember from your high school days, that if you had two electrodes uh, with the charges, let's say, uh, or if, if you had a steady state sensing problem to begin with, let's say you have a sensor and then there is an outer perimeter on which the density of the analyte is kept fixed. We are not solving the transient problem anymore. I'm just thinking about steady state diffusion. Then we know that the solution of the diffusion equation can be given by various types of functions. But since first of all it's steady state, therefore I do not have a d rho dt term anymore. It has been set to equal to zero. In general, I do not know how to solve this problem because this type of diffusion equation may have variety of solutions depending on the configuration of the sensor and the configuration of the surrounding media which is held at a constant density. But you see, although I do not know the solution of that problem, I actually know the solution uh, and all of you know the solution of this problem. This is an electrostatic problem. Assume that you have a cylinder, two concentric cylinders, the outer surface, the outer electrodes is held at a potential psi naught and the inner electrode at psi of s. The, there is no charge anywhere itself and so therefore we have simply Gauss's law. Epsilon second derivative of phi is equal to zero the Poisson equation, and we know the solution of this equation. If we wanted to know the charge Q on the electrode, we'd simply say that this is equal to the capacitance between these two electrodes and difference of the potential psi naught and psi s. Of course, I have just shown you a concentric cylinder. Had it been a parallel plate capacitor, you all know the capacitance. Capacitance is given by epsilon multiplied by W. Of course, you have to multiply it by A in order to get the total capacitance. If it were concentric, two concentric cylinder, one in the middle of the other, then again we know 2 pi epsilon log of W, W being the radius, outer radius, plus A naught is the inner radius, and it's a log ratio ratio 
uh, and then log is taken. This is a concentric cylinder. You know this answer uh, also. And finally, if it were two concentric spheres, one big sphere surrounding a middle one, once again, you can look it up from any textbook and you will get 4 pi epsilon 1 over a naught of the smaller sphere and the radius of the bigger sphere w plus a naught. Now you see immediately that once you know this solution you should be able to say what the solution of this equation the diffusion problem is steady state diffusion problem because rho if you replace phi by rho and epsilon by d then these two problems are exactly the same and if that is the case then I can immediately write that the current flux into the system is given by quote unquote a diffusion capacitance rho naught minus rho s in analogy of phi naught minus phi s and the diffusion equivalent capacitance everywhere you have epsilon replaced with w and then you are done. In that case if you had two nanowires one sort of sinking in carriers molecules from the other one or two nanospheres right in that case the results are immediately given. You can find out what the steady state flux of molecules are from this surface to the sensor surface. Now of course we do not have a steady state problem per se but this analogy up to this point is exact and uh, closely matched. Now in general of course these biomolecules may not may have uh, the sensor may have finite capacity it is easy to account for the finite capacity of this of this sensor because remember there is not only a diffusion problem but there is also a capture problem the problem how many molecules can be captured per unit time and so you can simply integrate the diffusion flux as a function of time this is the number of molecules captured per unit time is given by rho naught cap capacitance multiplied by rho naught we are assuming that rho s the concentration close to the sensor surface is very small so we can neglect it and because it's sort of catching things and removing things from the system very quickly and if you integrate this system the number of molecules captured for this structure is simply given by the capacitance diffusion equivalent capacitance the density of analyte and linearly proportional to time because it's a continuous steady state flux and this capacitance of course depends on the geometry of the sensor and the surrounding media itself. Now of course we are not really interested in steady state sensing a steady state capture problem but you see you could think about it a transient problem as a series of snapshot in steady state. For example when you see a movie all the images sort of are each can be static but when they are run at a quick succession as a function of time they look like a moving image. Similarly you can think about the outer electrode not really as a real electrode but sort of a transient position where the beyond which the bulk concentration persists and within here it has sort of diffused and sort of has been captured by the sensor itself. As a function of time this sensor this depleted region will gradually get bigger and bigger as a square root of dt t is the time. And so therefore it looks like the electrode spacing will now be time dependent quote unquote electrode spacing will be time dependent and it will go as square root of dt. All you have to do is that wherever you saw this w which was a fixed thing in the previous case fixed number for the steady state problem will now become a square root of dt. You have 2 dt in one dimension, 4 dt in two dimension, 6 dt in three dimensions when you have spherical sensing problem where the molecules are being captured by the small sphere within the in the in the center. 
Now this 2, 4 and 6, we wouldn't worry much about it because the number, these prefactors themselves are not important. But you immediately will see that these results give you pretty remarkable answers. We already know about these, these two, because this was planar sensors, this is nanoware sensor, we already know about them. We'll check it out whether we have gotten the right result using this approach. But this is completely new. We did not know how a nanosphere sensor would behave. So let's check it out. It turns out that the transient response, as I, uh, I told you before, is given by NT, the transient diffusion equivalent capacitance, rho naught and T from two slides before. I know about CDT for each type of system, a different fractal dimension, 2, 1, and 0. Now, if you put it in, this value in here, the square root of t will cancel and will give square root of t dependence for one dimensional sensor. Do you remember this is exactly the result we had when we analyzed the system by the simple approach of lost capacity, lost triangle. Similarly, for this nanoware sensors, once you put this value in, you see this logarithmic dependence is very weak. So once you put it in, it will be a set of constants. This will be a very weak dependence and essentially the number of particles captured will increase linearly in time. That is also a result that we have seen before. However, for the nanosphere sensors with a fractal dimension of zero, you see that as time progresses, one over six square root of delta t, this will become smaller and smaller. And over a time, then therefore, this will simply flip over and that will become a constant. Rho naught t will get multiplied. And so therefore, both a nanoware sensor and a nanosphere sensor have same dependencies. Both appear to be independent, sort of beaten the diffusion limit in the sense that the molecules do not show, uh, the time exponent do not show diffusion slowdown, unlike the planar case. But this nanosphere sensor is not significantly different from a nanoware sensor in that respect. So therefore, there is no point in actually making this sensor compared to a nanoware sensor, for example. Now, the result we just got using this simple capacitor approach, something that you learned in high school, perhaps, uh, does it uh, sort of, uh, is it real? Uh, does it compare well with exact solution? It turns out that the nanosphere sensors also can be solved exactly and analytically. And the solution is given by this flux density D rho naught divided by A naught multiplied by some complicated factor. You can integrate the whole thing to get the total number of, the total number of particles uh, that has been captured by the nanosphere sensor. And once you have integrated it out, there'll be a complicated expression. But the bottom line is that this linear dependence, this A naught is a small quantity, so this will drop out. And you will see that the linear dependence with time is exactly reproduced. So therefore, the simple approach we took uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, diffusion equivalent capacitance, in fact, gives us the correct result. So here is the summary of the, the types of response time that we have captured, the number of molecules that you capture by sensors of different uh, nanostructures or surfaces. If you have a planar sensor, or if you have a, a nanoware sensors, in both cases, you can use a very simple relationship where the DF is a fractal dimension. Rho naught is the, uh, is the analyte density in order to calculate the number of particle captured for a given amount of time. On the other hand, uh, for a nanosphere sensor, which is, has a fractal dimension between zero and one, the response time doesn't go like this, but rather simply as rho naught t to the power one. And therefore, 
this doesn't have significant difference compared to how a nano wire sensor captures molecule. So let's summarize then. So the summary would be something like this. We know the planar sensor now, 1 over rho squared. The nano wire, 1 over rho that, you've, that you have seen already. And the nano dot sensor, well, this is a little better, but not significantly. And therefore, and the experiments, if you put it in the literature, from the literature, you'll see it hugs the line. And therefore, this gives you fundamental limits to the nanobiosensor problem. Now, let me conclude by suggesting a few things. The settling time uh, is the time or the response time is the time needed before a sensor captures a certain number of molecules. And this minimum number of molecules to be captured depends on two things. If the density is very high, then the time will be low. But at the same time, if the sensor has a fractal dimension which is favorable, it's a one-dimensional or zero-dimensional uh, capture, that will also make things much, much faster. Now, this is a fundamental limit in the sense that it really doesn't matter what type of sensor you use uh, to detect the biomolecule. This result uh, would, be, would be correct. And in fact, uh, this is very similar to Heisenberg uncertainty principle that it relates fundamental quantities. In their case, energy and time. In this case, density and time giving a constant. Uh, of course, uh, the, it's not as fundamental as Heisenberg's principle, but it is has, because it can be overcome by using technological approaches. But for the time being, the analogy is very close. And the important point is it doesn't matter what type of sensors you have used. And the size of the biomolecule, if you use a DNA versus a protein, uh, of course, the response would be different. And the size of the biomolecule is hidden in the diffusion coefficient. A larger molecule has smaller diffusion coefficient compared to a smaller molecule. And at the end of the day, the geometry of diffusion as encapsulated in the, in the fractal dimension of the sensor surface, that determines the response of these sensors. In the next time around, we'll talk a little bit more about more complex surfaces because we now know how to do planar sensors, nanoware sensors, nanodot sensors, but you realize there are sensors which have, which may have a random collection of nanowares or more complicated uh, version of surfaces, nanostructure surfaces. How do you get the response of those sensors? Uh, we'll discuss it in the next lecture. And until that time, take care.